I agree with you that Georgia's probably not as good that I believe that remains to be seen. I want to see them play an elite team, but uh, the closest we've seen is Oregon slash Tennessee. One of those two. Um, but it just, it, it's just reasonable to think that they're not quite uh, the defensive presence that they were last year, uh, because that was one of the great defenses we've ever seen uh, as opposed to, they probably still have the best defense in the country, but it's just not quite as airtight. And, um, you know, their, their offense is a little bit more, to use your term, wobbly than it was last year. Uh, I do think that Michigan's better this year with J.J. McCarthy, and I think that their offensive approach is much better as well. It's, it's more diversified. It, it, it's hard for me to get past that Illinois game, though. Like, M Michigan sure. played very poorly in what was a high-stakes game and needed some bad coaching from Brett Bielema uh, to get through that game. You know, Illinois was marching with the, with the short lead in the fourth quarter, and Bielema throws that long pass on first down. Instead of sticking with the short passes, which were working, like he made some specific tactical decisions that got Illinois behind schedule on that drive uh, and enabled Michigan to be within reach with a, with a Jake Moody field goal uh, at the end of that game. I mean, Michigan's passing game looked bad in that game. Receivers were dropping passes. McCarthy had some really easy throws that he was missing. And I go back to the point about Ohio State. And so for Michigan and Ohio State fans who are getting angry, like it's not as though McCarthy made these incredible plays. No, these were basic throws to wide open receivers. And he threw an yeah. eight yard out where the corner misses the tackle. And because Ohio State is blitzing for God knows why, like you don't – you don't blitz struggling quarterbacks. Like you make struggling quarterbacks slowly work the ball down the field. You make a struggling quarterback engineer that 13 play 80 yard drive. You blitz the elite quarterbacks. You don't blitz the bad ones. And so Jim Knowles, like, I don't know where his tactical approach came from, but like as soon as that tackle was missed on that eight yard out, you know, it was a Michigan touchdown. And so Ohio state handed Michigan some pretty easy touchdowns. And so, yeah, like we all know when a, we all know what a great play is. We all know what a next level play is. And JJ McCarthy did what he was supposed to do. So credit to him. Like he stepped up big in a big game. Like, you know, he deserves a heck of a lot of praise, but let's not get it twisted. Let's not say that like he made these amazing jaw dropping plays. No, that's, that's Caleb Williams. And, and so that reinforces the idea that if it's USC and Michigan, like that, you know, I'm not I'm not sweating bullets if I'm a USC fan in that game. Like I'm like Michigan's a worthy test and that's not going to be an easy game. But I'm certainly not going in thinking, oh, Michigan has the clear upper hand. Well, let's just put it that way. Whereas if it's USC Georgia in the Peach Bowl, Georgia with a month to prepare, you know, that that's a freight train head, heading USC's way. And I think the Trojans get steamrolled. So like it's not as though I think the Trojans are fine no matter what. I really see a difference between Michigan and Georgia, let's keep this in mind about, you know, both Kirby Smart and Nick Saban in the playoff. You give them a month to prepare and you give those guys a month off to rest, recharge, gather. You know, we've seen some creaky Alabama teams under Nick Saban. Like last year's a really good example against Luke Fickle, who's now on his way to Wisconsin. You know, that, that Alabama team limped into the playoff semifinal uh, against Cincinnati, you know, it was th that Alabama team last year trailed Auburn 10 to three in the final minute. So they'll score just three points in the first 59 minutes against Auburn had some other games where, you know, just barely got by, but then you give that Saban team a month off to gather regroup. They, you know, they were physically dominant against Cincinnati in that semifinal. Now you could say Cincinnati, you know, group of five, uh, you know, not really the same as a, a Michigan or, or another team, but like Kirby Smart and Georgia really, you know, they decisively hammered Michigan in a game that was never particularly close last year, too. So I'm thinking that, you know, for all of Georgia's inconsistencies, you know, scoring just 16 points against Kentucky, giving up 22 to Kent State, barely scraping by against Missouri. You know, Georgia's had its wobbly moments this year, no question about it. But I think that with a month off, Georgia's going to come at whoever is its semifinal opponent.
just like a freight train, and it's going to be in Atlanta. So that's a Georgia home game. So for Michigan fans who are upset or who think that I'm really you know diminishing the Wolverines, it's partly just a comparison relative to uh, you know playing Michigan in Glendale versus playing Georgia in Atlanta. Like if you can't admit that those are two vastly different scenarios and two vastly different situations, uh, you know I don't know what else to tell you because hey Michigan's doing a great job as a program. Harbaugh has not just righted the ship, but he has kind of reinforced the extent to which he's righted the ship by beating Ryan Day twice and doing so in Columbus. Like it's a it's a king sized conquest for Harbaugh, and he deserves rich congratulations and praise for that. But in terms of winning a playoff semifinal, that's like that is what Harbaugh has yet to do. It's also what Lincoln Riley has yet to do. It, it's part of what would make a Michigan USC semifinal uh, so delicious. But like, let's not put Michigan and Georgia on the same plane because Kirby Smart's been there, done that. He's won. A, he's won some playoff semifinals. He's been to the top. He won the national title last year. Harbaugh, as great as he is, and he's certainly reaffirmed his greatness each of these past two seasons, Smart sets the bar higher, and he deserves that benefit of the doubt. And Michigan playing in Glendale, like that's not like a a, a glorif- a, you know, basically a home game for Michigan, whereas Georgia playing in Atlanta, that is basically a home game for the dogs. So there's a lot of ways in which Georgia and Michigan <laughs> should be differentiated, not just in terms of their inherent resources, but where they're going to be playing, Glendale, Atlanta, it's two very different situations and people need to realize that.